Well, I think uh, I've been pretty pleased. Uh, you know, getting completing practice 12 today. Uh, I like their mindset. I like our competitive edge. These guys are competing. We've really challenged them as far as that's concerned, as far as the consistency in their performance every day in, day out. We have more competitive depth through our roster than we've had in our in our first four years. So competition, you know, is, is what you need on your football team to create the type of consistency you want to have. We were a very inconsistent football team last year, especially on the defensive side of the ball. But uh, to see the guys competing at a high level uh, in, in a lot of areas on our football team is good. And we've got more talent on our team than we've had. So uh, it's exciting to, to see. We've got to continue to progress and improve. And uh, we'll practice Tuesday, Thursday, and then we'll have the spring game at noon. Uh, and then I also want to uh, DJ Swearinger's uh, uh, foundation to support the Midlands Boys and Girls Clubs uh, is going to be a fantastic night for us. It, and we'll start at, uh, the gates open at 5:30 in the volleyball center here on campus, and then they'll start the game at six. And Melvin Ingram and Hayden Hurst and uh, a host of former Gamecocks will be there. And I've been to the game before, and they do a great job. And it'll be a lot of fun for if you're a Gamecock fan. So I encourage everyone to come to the spring game first of all, and secondly, uh, support DJ and his foundation. And I'll open up for any questions. You're still rotating four quarterbacks, basically, or have you whittled that down? Yeah, I mean, we're still we're still all four guys are repping. So we're just kind of working through that right now. It's hard to rep four guys, but we're in spring ball. We're not getting ready for a game, and we got to make you know good decisions on, on who those guys will be moving forward. Has anybody looked like a number two guy more than the others? No, I, th I would say that there's been some shining moments here and there th throughout uh, the first 12 days uh, for all three guys involved, and we've got to continue to, to, to move forward. How did the scrimmage kind of go today? Any standouts? And Good. You know, uh, the last two Saturdays we've kind of, you know, I just think there's some things we need to work on fundamentally and, and putting the ball down and playing is important, but uh, we've kind of divided the, the, the day up into a half practice, half scrimmage. You know, the last two Saturdays we've had close to 150 scrimmage snaps along with uh, practice and some, some things I felt like we needed to work on. But I was very pleased today with some things that we did on both sides of the ball. If you compliment one side, it means the other side's not doing it well. So that's, the, that's what you gotta, you got to sift through as, as a coach. But, uh, uh, again, I like the competitive edge and I like the guys competing. I know you want Jake to get his work, but will you spend the last part of this week trying to make sure where that, that number two might come from, or, or is that still something that might work itself out in the fall? Well, the number of reps those guys have gotten is all right at about the same, and we, all of those guys have rep with our first group. Uh, to give them the, the same opportunities, and that's really important to give the guy the, the same same looks and, and uh, that, that everyone's getting. So, but we're going to continue again. Jake needs reps as well, and uh, those guys will continue to rep. Theoretically, could you go into the season with that number two spot undecided and let it shake out then, or do you feel like you well, be like, done we'd like by... to make a decision in training camp? You know, because it's hard to rep three when you're when you're getting ready for a game. You got to you got to give the you know, the first reps, and then you got to be able to have a guy, second guy ready to go. And it's hard to get to a third guy in the season. So we'd like to make that decision at some point in training camp. Will anybody be live in the scrimmage? In the well, they, yeah, the young game? quarterbacks have all been live. And will they continue to be in the yeah. game? Yeah, we got to, you know, under duress, making decisions, ball security. Uh, we've been thudding them in the pocket and outside the pocket, we've made them live. So that's, we, we've done that in all, both Saturdays, and, we'll, and it will be that way in the spring game. How, how has Jay Eric been dividing his time between quarterback and some of the special team stuff he's been doing? Well, he just he sits in the special teams meetings and uh, he reps uh, during our special teams time when we do rep those things. He's an he's an outstanding athlete. He's a wonderful young man, and he's going to help our football team. What, what's it say about a kid that he is a quarterback? But he's also willing to kind of chip in in that very non quarterback. He's a very unselfish young man. And he wants to help. And you know, we got into a little bit of a bind last year with some numbers, especially late in the year with some numbers of guys on special teams. And Jay was more than willing to help our football team. How difficult has it been to accomplish what you want to accomplish with the running game, given the limited numbers you've had in that room over the course of spring? As far as guys being limited with injuries and stuff like that. Well, actually, we've been fine. We've had uh, you know Deshaun Fenwick and Kevin Harris have gotten a lot of carries. Mon Denson's had a good spring. Uh, AJ Turner is uh, is still playing both sides. His emphasis has been on offense uh, the last since we've returned from spring break. But he still we take about two periods out of the practice uh, each day, and he he reps on defense. So we've gotten good numbers and we've gotten good reps for those guys. I've been real pleased with the progress that we've continued trying to make there. Is AJ strictly offense? Since y'all have gotten back from the break, or is he still no, doing a little bit defense? We still work? take two periods a day. Did your recorder not work? Uh, we still take two periods a day that he I, reps on defense. You just said that. 
Yeah. Oh, and didn't I say that? I believe you did. You did. <laughs> so, sometimes we're thinking of the next thing we've got to ask. And, I know. And everybody always, jumps in. It's so, like that too now. Well, you've got to listen, but you're not listening <laughs> to the right. words. That's my greatest fear, just unfolded in front of you. <laughs> <laughs> if that's your greatest fear, you got a great life. <laughs> I didn't even know it. Pretty charm. <laughs> What has it been like kind of managing the, the secondary you guys have with, it seems like a little bit of a shortage of numbers just because you got, you know, four yeah, guys are going to you know, come in. Those guys are playing really well. Izzy and JC. JC can play corner and nickel. Um, and, you know, to me, a, a competitive edge is a talent. Mm -hmm. You like to compete. And RJ, uh, with throwing that category, th those guys like to compete. They like to practice. They like to come out to practice. And they like to compete. And uh, I've been very pleased with where they've, um, come as far as the spring is concerned, their development as a player. Uh, JT base had a really good spring. Uh, you know, JT continues to, to improve in his, in his coverage, uh, which is something we've, we've worked on a lot as far as man coverage and situations. Um, you know, Jalen Dickerson has done some nice things. Uh, so, so I think we've made some progress. Jam has taken part in most of the practice, just none of the contact. Uh, we've kept him out of that. Uh, but, you know, I, again, we, we, we may be numbers-wise thin, but we've got some quality players. We've improved ourselves. Is that kind of good with your guys' emphasis on cross-training? You've got maybe fewer guys, but you can kind of throw them sort of in all well, over. Well, you know, RJ and JC both can play nickel. And then we've got to be able to train one of the freshmen to come in and be a, be a dependable guy you know, before our first ball game. Uh, we got to continue to create some depth at corner, but AJ is a guy that can go in a game and play, you know, and, and he's shown that to be able to handle both duties. He's a senior, he's mature, he's he's got a lot, you know. You know, again, I think it's been really proud of him and how he's approached everything. Here you are going your senior year, and your coach is asking you to play a different position. Totally unselfish. Yes, sir. I'll do whatever I got to do to help the team. Uh, but but he's he's excelled at corner and he's played well at running back. So we'll continue to to look at that. Cliff Kingsbury made some news at the owners' meeting recently, saying he gives his guys or will give his guys and has at Texas Tech cell phone breaks, is what he called them in meetings. Do you guys structure in? I mean, there's all this psychology about the generation, this generation, and their attention span, and blah blah blah. Do y'all structure in breaks like that in meetings, whatever you call them? No, we don't. As far as that's concerned, I always tell the young men, if you have an emergency going on, if your family's traveling, if your mom's traveling, I have no problem you bringing your cell phone in your meeting, but. You know, when we, when we come in here for football meetings, we're going to talk about football. I do think that I don't disagree with the attention span at times, and you've got to understand your room. Mm -hmm. And we may have a little bit of a break time, but it's not going to be cell phone break time. Right. Mm -hmm. It's going to be talking about life or talking take about academics breath. or take a deep breath. I, I, I agree with that 100%. Just the studies that we've had and the educational people that we talk to as far as attention span and being able to, you know, but again, I think Josh, a lot of it goes back to understanding your room. Yeah. You know, number one, the maturity of your room. And some guys do have a harder time paying attention for longer periods. But we test our guys, uh, all the diagnostic testing when they come in. So we have a pretty good understanding of how they learn the best. And if some of it, they can see the video. Some of them are going to have to walk through it. Some of it can understand a schematic on a piece of paper. So we, we go through all those things and understand exactly how our guys learn in situations and, you know, what's the best learning. We've even gotten in situations where we've taken a coach that's taken a couple guys that maybe just need to walk through it and taking them out and walk through it. Because it's all about teaching and, the, and developing the young man and that's that's what we're here for with, with that the way the guys learn is that something y'all do through the recruiting process or is it just you when they get here in the okay. recruiting it's just when they sign you're able yeah. to, to to put them through that and that's something i think is really important our academic maria hickman of course do the best job there is in the country as far as those things are concerned but we we communicate a lot about you know a young man and how he learns and i think it's really important to identify those things and, and uh when they get on campus that's part of no different than weight room and uh the film room and the, and the practice field you know learn how they learn how they learn because we all learn differently and it's not all the same for everybody at what point did that become a part of the process like where did you sort of first see that pick it up and well really when i was at the miami dolphins and we went to the combine you, know, you were able to do that testing there and uh, Human Resource Tactics is, is the group that we use, and all NFL teams, I think about 28 of the 32 teams use them as far as those things are concerned. And uh, it's been really good for us in, in identifying those things. As Zach has been able to incrementally do more as he's got on the field, what have you noticed out of him? Um, uh, Pickens. Zach, Pickens. Zach Pickens, I'm sorry. sorry. I'm thinking Zach Bailey. I'm sitting there thinking, well, Zach's been on the field this time. <laughs> but no, Zach's done a really good job. You know, really, we, we've – We've come a long way up front, really on both lines of scrimmage. And you want to look at the young players. You know, obviously, Javon's not going through spring. Uh, Kier and Kobe are two uh, older players that have played really good football for us. Uh, you look at Zach Pickens, and he's having a really good spring. And it's, every day's a new day. 
right now. And that's what's so great about mid-years. They're able to come in and they're able to really digest the information. And he is just a, he's a pleaser. He wants to please and he works and he, he's, he's going to be a really good football player for us. Joe Anderson is another player that's a young player that's really come on for us. Uh, Rodriguez Fenton is a guy that, uh, that I've been very pleased with him continuing to improve every day. You know, last year we went into the season with Javon and Kobe and Kier. And then we went to Ricky and JJ. I mean, they're true freshmen. And we're out there in week two playing probably Georgia, probably one of the better offensive lines we're going to face. And they're taking on a 700-pound double team. You know, really, it's not fair, isn't what we asked them to do. We should, they needed to be redshirted. Of course, no one, that's a bad word. No one will say that. <laughs> but they needed to be redshirted. They needed to be developed. They needed to be coached for a year to let the game slow down. Now, some of the growing pains we went through last year were going to benefit because JJ had a great day today. Ricky Sandage is having a fantastic spring. I mean, so now you're talking in terms of quality, depth, and numbers of guys and competition, which all makes us better. Brad Johnson continues to come on. Danny's not going through spring, but another very dependable player for us. Dennis Warren's having a good spring. And you flip it to the offensive line of young players. You take Hank Menos, who's having a really good spring. Chandler Farrell's done some good things. Eric Douglas has played tackle, has played guard, and today he played center. Uh, you couple that, you know, with, with Javon Gwynn, another young player that's coming along. Jordan Rhodes, another young player that's made some tremendous strides. And you couple that with Dylan Wanham and, and Sedarius Hutcherson and Donnell Stanley. So now, you, you know, you're starting to talk about fast-twitch athletes on, that on both sides of the ball um, can, can excel. And that's, that's ex got me excited about where we are at this point. That's the flip side of the way last year was disappointing, but you at least got the guys as much as the experience that you possibly right. could. Well, we had at the end of the year on defense, you look at the bowl game, you look at the end of the, end of the, end of the regular season, we had seven and eight true freshmen on the field on defense. So that causes for some anxious moments as far as just alignment, assignment, and then past that, the execution at a high level. And uh, again, the growing pains were hard, they were tough, but at the end of the day, uh, we're gonna benefit from that moving forward. And you've seen those gains mentally for our guys. A guy, Tyreek Johnson, a guy we were excited about, hurt his knee last year. But he's another guy that came through spring last year, I thought played extremely well, and another guy that's come along for us. But again, we, we just, we're just better across the board on those two areas, which in our league, in our schedule, you got to be good in those areas. What is Kevin think? Oh, I'm sorry, Kevin uh, Harris showing you. This. Kevin is a heavy runner. You know, he's a guy that uh, probably needs to get his weight down a little bit uh, to be able to sustain and endure longer. Uh, but when he gets behind his pads, he's a load. He's a hard guy to thud. Uh, there's not a lot of uh, soft areas on his body. You know, so, so those are things that I've seen. But I think he's picked things up well. He's a willing participant. He's, he's, a, he's a, a very you know, adaptable young man as far as learning and those things are concerned. He's really worked hard. I've been real proud of him. What kind of a role can Will Register have in this program? Well, we need for him to be able to block in the C area. Uh, which he's, he, I think he's made some strides there. Obviously, a guy that we we felt a lot about coming out of shape in high school, and uh, so he's done some nice things this spring. With Evan Henson now being mm -hmm. as full time as he can be with the class schedule, how much has he been able to do, and what has what have y'all seen from him? Well, again, he's missed he's missed some days because of class. He doesn't have class on Tuesdays and Thursdays, and obviously Saturday. So we've been able to, these last two weeks. He's been a full participant in all that. He's missed the meetings on Monday, Wednesday, and Fridays, and the walkthroughs, uh, which is again that's just that's that's something would certainly he would benefit from. But uh, you know, I think you're going to see a lot from just the standpoint of being able to lift all summer with our guys, and that was something where he was still you know partially in basketball and kind of you know doing some of the workouts with us. So for him to be full time with that, just physically. I think it's going to be good for him as well as mentally, you know, just understanding more about what we do. Is health health wise, you guys, anything else have popped up? As yeah, far as no, as we've, we're fine. We have, uh, uh, you know, Hank had an ankle, didn't didn't go today, and Chandler had an ankle, didn't go today. That's why Eric played center, but they're fine. It's nothing, nothing serious. Anything that stood out from Trey Kenyon now that he's been in for? Yeah, Trey's been. it has been. He had a, uh, in the red zone down there in seven on seven. Had a touchdown pass today. It was nice. And uh, again, just it's just just continuing to, through that process of coming in as a as a freshman or a high school senior, and and uh, it's it's a huge learning process. But I've been pleased with what we've seen. Was the helmet stickers your your idea? Who who? No, who Coach Hutzer came. We're always trying to reward the players anywhere, any way we can to, to recognize them, to promote the guys that are doing things our way, to doing things the Gamecock standard. And uh, certainly those guys have done nice jobs. We want just a, just a different way to reward them for in, during spring ball. And that's solely special team reps? Right now it's just all special teams, yeah. Does that have anything to do with that board over there, or is that something different? That board? Yeah. That one that's, got that's a goal board. That's on defense production points, just different things you do either positively or negatively for your team. 
With DJ's uh, charity game, was did you have any role in getting that on this weekend? And did you talk with him about that, that being? Well, we talked, you know, just about, you know, the first year we were here. He had it in, in uh, I believe, June or July. And, uh, and uh, just talking in terms of be a great time for a lot of the former players come back to the spring game. Obviously, we have the, the flag football game. None of those guys are going to play in the flag football game. At least I hope they're not. Uh, so... Um, <laughs> And to have them interact, and they're all here, and, and they all, of course, enjoy seeing each other, uh, and it times up well for us to be able to, for our staff to be there and to support them as well. I know Spurrier caught the pass last year in the no, spring game. Oh, he didn't. He did. Well, he was supposed to, but yeah, he was supposed to. Do you have, I got blamed because it was a bad win. Do you have a, a hint on on who the honor is going to? No, you got to come to the game to see that. Thanks, Will. That's it. All right. Thanks, Thanks, Will. Thanks, Will. Thanks, Will. Thanks, Will. Thanks, Will.